everybody <laughs> welcome back today this video is going to be a little different and welcome if you're new to my channel I do menu Monday videos every Monday and I'm trying out all new recipes this is a new to me book I got this from Amazon but I didn't order it came with something I ordered something for the kitchen and they just gave me the book with it I wish I could share it with you guys, but it doesn't say who wrote it. It has an introduction, doesn't say the author's name, doesn't say who published the book. There's a um, scan on the back. I tried that. They said it was too short. There's nothing in here whatsoever that tells me about how to get a book like this. You see, it's got some beautiful old ads in it but basically this is a collection and it says right here every family has treasured recipes and these are likely recipes that were not included in any collection but they were found squirreled away on index cards scraps of paper with worn edges and old cookbooks and they put this book together and I've had it a while and I thought I'm going to try some of these and they were so so good the flavors are good the ingredients are simple um, easy to follow now instead of typing all this out because there's no copyright involved here um, I just took a picture of each recipe that I shared um, let's see if I can find one I did Okay, here we go. This pasta sauce. I made a lasagna with this. So I just took a picture and you'll have the ingredients and then the directions. And so you can just stop it. I put them at the end of each video and just screenshot it. And that way you'll have both the ingredients and the directions. So I hope you enjoy this and thanks again for coming to my channel and watching my videos. I really do appreciate it. And at the end, I'll give you the emoji to leave in the comments below. And then I'll see you next Monday for another Menu Monday. Oh, and I did redo the kitchen. I'll have a video coming up about that. We're always up for a good sandwich. So this one stuck out in the book. The first thing I did was cut up the onions and the peppers it called for them both to be uh, sliced thin so I did the best I could Now with the griddle on medium high and prep with some olive oil, I'm putting the vegetables on here to cook. I'm going to do this for about six to eight minutes, tossing them until they're caramelized. Now I decided to add some uh, seasoning to this in addition to what they put on, what well, it calls for towards the end of cooking, and that's the Uncle Chris's steak seasoning. I didn't put a lot, but just enough to give it a little kick. Now we'll keep turning these until they're done. Then it says to put them on the cool side of the griddle. Well, I don't have a griddle that has a hot or cold side, so I just removed the vegetables once they were done. You add a little garlic, cook that for about 30 seconds, I think it was, and then removed all of this and worked on the steak. If you have a cold part of the griddle, you can, you know, like the black stones, you can turn one side off and on. You can do that. Depends on what you're using. All right, so I'm cutting up my deli meat now, and we've got a half pound of roast beef uh, sliced thin. I'm also prepping it again with some olive oil. Speed this up, get the meat on here. 
And then I am going to add some more Uncle Chris's seasoning to this. You just want to cook the beef until it's done. It didn't take very long. I decided to add the rest of the meat, which I was going to save, but I wanted Big Daddy to have enough to take to work the next day for lunch. He ended up having two sandwiches tonight, and I gave him some of the TikTok spaghetti. I know that was last week, but it was just the other day for us here. So we'll get all this finished, and then we're going to add the vegetables back to the mixture. We'll get it all combined and warmed through. Now I'm working these into the three piles and what I'm going to do next is put the provolone cheese on here to melt. Big Daddy's getting the uh, bread out of the oven. I sliced it and we decided to toast it in a little oven and he's getting that and he's going to spread some mayonnaise on them while I'm melting the cheese. This was so good. And here are the instructions and ingredients. So today we're doing the baked lasagna with the homemade pasta sauce. Since we just had a million dollar TikTok uh, spaghetti last week, but Daddy said this was a two million dollar lasagna. It was absolutely fantastic. Do take some time though. This this took about two and a half hours to complete. I did it on a Sunday, so that was fine. The first thing I did is cut up the vegetables, uh, onions and green peppers, and I'll put some garlic in here. And we're going to saute this, uh, stirring occasionally for about seven minutes until they get nicely browned. While we're waiting on those, I'm gonna go ahead and get the meat going. Now this said you could do two pounds of ground beef or a combination of beef and Italian sausage, which is what I did. I like the combination and I love any sort of spaghetti sauce with Italian sausage, but the choice is yours. Now that the uh, vegetables are cooked, we're gonna go ahead and get in all of our sauces. I'm just, while the can of is doing the cans, I'm crumbling up the meat in the pan. We're adding in the sugar, oregano, which I used Italian seasoning, that was the other option. Uh, we're doing a can of crushed tomatoes and a can of tomato paste. And then, um, oh, it said to add a little Parmesan too. I didn't film that, but it's a quarter cup, I believe. Yes. And again, with this week, uh, all I can do is put pictures at the end with the ingredients and the directions for you. This one is two pages. One page is for the sauce, which you can use in spaghetti or whatever you'd like, and the other page is for the actual lasagna. So we're going to get everything mixed in here, 
and then you have to let this simmer on low covered for it says 30 to 60 minutes I chose to do it for an hour and we're just waiting on our meat to get done because we're going to put this in the sauce to, and that way it all simmers together for that hour and because I did not want to have the propane running, it was a pretty warm day, not hot, but an hour with propane on was a little much. I went ahead and got out the induction cooktop and I left it on that for that hour. While that was cooking, I did go ahead and get my noodles ready. For the list of ingredients on the lasagna, we have a three quarter pound American cheese sliced, which I was able to purchase at the deli, and then three quarters of a pound mozzarella cheese sliced. And I had a real hard time finding this. Um, but anyway, I finally got it at Walmart. Not from the deli, but um, just the cheese department. So anyway, that's what I used. I did not use all that cheese, however. We had it left over for subs that you'll see coming up the following day. Now we have all our ingredients ready. We're going to go ahead and layer up the lasagna for the directions. This goes in the oven at 375 degrees. It bakes for 30 minutes covered with loose foil. And you take the foil off and then you bake an additional 25 minutes until the cheese is all bubbly and the top's nice and brown. And then you let it sit for 15 minutes before serving.
right, so we're going to send this off to the oven. Like I said, 30 minutes covered, 25 uncovered. And here it comes, all finished. It was such a pretty lasagna, and I'm telling you, this flavor, this sauce, absolutely fantastic, and I hope you give this one a try. This is my plate, and here are your ingredients and directions. You can just pause, do a screenshot. Like I said, it was a $2 million lasagna. I can't believe I did not have the record button on. I am so, so sorry. Let me tell you what we've got in here. This is our, our Mexican style shredded chicken. And I will have this at the end of the this video. But in here, it just says throw all ingredients into a big saucepan and boil on high for 10 minutes. So it's getting ready to boil. We have a pound and a half of chicken breasts. I use boneless, skinless. Three cups of water, one cup chicken broth, half cup chopped onion, half cup chopped celery. I use some frozen that, that I had of those. A third teaspoon pepper. We have uh, garlic, chili powder, cumin, and paprika. And that's what I have in here. So we're going to boil this for 10 minutes, then we're going to reduce the heat to medium, we're going to cover it and with a lid slightly and let it simmer for 30 minutes, and then I'll be back. Okay, it has boiled on high for 10 minutes. We're going to reduce this to a medium. It says to do that for 30 minutes with a lid that's slightly open, so I'm going to go ahead and leave this wooden spoon here to just sort of crack it and I'll turn the fan back on to pull out the uh, humidity but boy does it smell good so here we go so the, the directions are to remove the lid and then just let it simmer until all the liquid uh, goes away. But it said if you shred the chicken prior to that step, you'll get a more delicious flavor, which is what I'm going to do. So let me get the chicken out of here. Oh, goat. Throwing it around. Alright, we're just going to shred this out. Oh my gosh, it shreds so well. This is lovely. These are going to be fantastic. The smell. If you could smell this. I tell you, this book. You know, my thought was, oh, I'll just throw the chicken in the crock pot. But, you know, that's just a dumb deal. But this. The flavor, the smell. I don't know. I don't know if you can get this from a crock pot. It's like grandma was right. Alright, so we're going to put this back in the pot. And we're just going to let this simmer until all this liquid is absorbed. And I'll show you <laughs> how much liquid we have for this chicken to sop up. But that just makes such flavorful chicken, doesn't it? Okay, come have a look see. That's all the liquid that's left. We'll put this back in here. Alright, I'm going to let this just simmer till Big Daddy gets home. Uh, which will be about 45 minutes and then we'll assemble our burritos. 
see you soon. I'm just checking in. It's been about well, 15 minutes. We've still got some juice left. So I'm going to go ahead and let it continue to cook down until the chicken has absorbed all that delicious flavor. Okay, I'm going to do a voiceover for the rest of the video because Big Daddy got home, the TV's blaring, we're talking. So I thought this would be a little easier. So I do have a recipe for this portion. I decided to do some chicken wraps. I will link it in the comment box below. It's basically ranch, salsa, and then there's some seasonings, and then you just oh cheese and then you just fry them up in this uh, frying pan now there's lots of things you can make with this chicken once you've got it cooked today i'm going to do a pizza for lunch i'm just going to put a uh, pizza sauce on there with the chicken and some bell pepper so whatever you want to do with this chicken uh, you don't have to do wraps you could do uh, tacos i mean any sort of mexican dish this would be delicious because the flavor i don't know i can't it was something I have never had before. It was so delicious. And I hope you give this one a try, no matter what you do with the chicken once you've got it cooked. Anyway, I'm going to get these done. I did not get a picture of my final plates. We were so hungry. But I did take a picture of me putting together Big Daddy's lunch. So I do have a picture of that. Okay, here's your recipe for the Mexican chicken out of the book and in the comment box below I do have the recipe for the wraps. This was a super simple dinner on a day that I had been running around so I was very happy to do it and they were good. All you do is add the ground beef the stuffing, the water, and the eggs, shape them into one inch bowls, and then bake them in the oven 15 to 20 minutes at 400. I sprayed the first pan, but then I had plenty left over, so I just used one with a silicone mat. And I had so many meatballs that I decided to save some. The sauce that goes with this was really good. It was just barbecue sauce and cranberry sauce. And I think it would be really good if you like made the meatballs, put them in the crock pot, put that sauce on it and served it like at a party with toothpicks. It was that kind of sauce. So I saved, and although it was really good on the sandwich, which I just toasted rolls, I like um, marinara sauce on my meatballs when I do them as a sub, so I saved the rest of the meatballs and put them in the freezer. I'm just going to get some spaghetti sauce or make some more of that sauce that I put on the lasagna and do them on subs that way to see if we like that better. So I will let you know in a future video about that, but like I said, these are really good and you could serve them either way, either on the subs or as an appetizer. All right, so now that the um, meatballs are in the oven, we'll go ahead and mix up the sauce. I'll just leave this on low, and that way it'll warm through and be ready when the meatballs come out. Here we go. It took about 20 minutes. I just made sure that the meatballs were cooked through. And now I'm going to put these subs into the oven and just toast them. 
got a little overdone, but they were still really good. Just a little brown around the edges. I was watching a show with Big Daddy. I always need to set a timer. <laughs> All right, here they are. I'm going to put some of the sliced mozzarella that was left over from the lasagna in the bottom, put my meatballs on, and then after my sauce, I just did a little shredded mozzarella. The taste was really good. Like I said, I really enjoyed them. I am going to give them a try with the marinara sauce and see which we prefer. I'll let you know in a future video, but I know that these would be great for party in the crock pot, like I said earlier. And at the end here, I'm going to put your ingredients and directions. So if you'd like to try them, just give it a screenshot. Okay guys, today we're going to make this chocolate bundt cake. So I got my bundt pan already floured and greased. We have pie filling, cake, eggs, cocoa, milk, chocolate chips, and a beater. So let's get busy. The first thing we're going to do is mix in the mixing bowl the cake mix pudding mix, cocoa, milk, and eggs. We'll beat that on low just until it's moistened and then leave it on medium for two minutes. And then you take it out of the stand mixer, <coughs> excuse me, and stir in the chocolate chips. going to get this poured into the bunt pan. We've got the oven preheating at 350 degrees and this cooks for 55 to 60 minutes or until the toothpick comes out clean. Mine did take 55 minutes. You let it cool for 10 minutes and then remove it from the pan and put it on a wire rack to cool completely. Now I dusted mine with confectioner's sugar that's coming up, but on this, in this book there's some hints and tips on the page that I'll have at the end, and it shows you how to do a, a chocolate glaze if you'd rather do it that way. This was an absolutely delicious cake, and I hope you give it a try. It was really easy. Here's mine with a heavy dusting of powdered sugar. We served it with a little whipped cream. And here's your page with all the information. If you enjoyed this week's collection, please give my video a thumbs up. And if you made it to the end, kindly leave a sunshine emoji in the comments. Thanks again for watching and wishing everybody a wonderful week, and I'll see y'all next Monday.